Query block naming. Many years ago, before I joined Oracle, I was working at a client site, and they'd written this application in C Sharp, C++, using an enterprise service bus, Oracle Tuxedo, all talking to WebLogic, and it ran terribly. Nothing to do with actually any component in particular. It's just the way that the program was written is it was incredibly chatty. To satisfy one function, they would call 27,000 C Sharp objects. Each one of them would do a little simple query off to the database. And so it was just like, you know, Time spent in here, zero seconds. Time spent in the database, zero seconds. Time spent going back and forth between the two, two minutes. So I got asked to, I got, this is why I got the job at that place. They said, can you come in and fix all this please for us? And I didn't understand any of the logic, but all I did was take all those calls out of here and move them down to a stored procedure. Right? And, and I'm not having to go at C Sharp or C++ or any 3GL. I didn't even try to understand you know, optimizing it. I simply said, there's 10,000 calls here, let's one call, do 10,000 individual SQLs here. We're not going to try to refactor it. There's 10,000 individual ones, and then one call back. And that was sufficient for them. So my job was to try take all this C-sharp code and convert it to Peel SQL. And I don't know C-sharp. So I went and looked at it, and there's all this stuff in here, and lots of little SQL calls and stuff, and I didn't really understand it. And there was no comments. No comments at all. Yeah, in fact, I even Googled for the comment sign in C-sharp you know, in case I was missing something. And they said, it's OK. C Sharp is self-documenting. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know, maybe not. That humor aside, good code is self-documenting. You know, if you took all the, code out of, all the documents out of code and you can still work out what's going on, that code's pretty good stuff. You know, it's been well-named, well-structured, whatever. Not saying we shouldn't have the comments, but if you took them out and you can still read it, you can, it's a good measure of good code. It then dawned upon me is, I do all these talks all over the world about how you can put more and more power into your SQL statements. So SQL can get pretty complex. So SQL, I, I should be sort of eating my own dog food here, SQL should self-document as well. And that's what query blocks are, a means of self-documenting your SQL. Let's look at an example. Here's a complicated query, complicated in the fact that it references the employee table three times. Let's say it runs a bit slow, so we look at the execution plan for it. And I see the employee table three times. But which employee table there belongs to the employee table there? Is it just one for one down the screen? Did the database switch the queries around? We don't really know. This is where query blocks are quite useful. It's just a special kind of hint. It's an annotative documentation hint. I can say this query block here is called the year someone was hired. And I can use a nice meaningful name here to help document what the SQL is doing. This query block here is called the average salary. This, in this one, the very top level query, is actually a query block itself. I've chosen not to give it a name. I could, but it haven't, haven't given one. In fact, I've done some color coding here. So remember, we've got yellow, then blue, pink on the outside. Here's the execution plan again with the query block name put alongside it. You can see yellow actually got pushed to the bottom, blue got in the middle, and the one I didn't give a query block name to, the database gave one to. It's your first select statement, cell dollar one. If you do no query block names, you'll see cell dollar one, cell dollar two, et cetera, et cetera, throughout. But now, rather than looking at a giant execution plan, I can go, ah, this is the bit about the average salary. OK, I can focus on that. This is the bit about someone was, when someone was hired, et cetera. So it lets me piece the thing apart. It also assists with query tracing. If you're one of these people that likes getting into 10053 traces, then two things. One, you should probably seek some help. And the second one is you can actually have that, those query block names will go into the trace as well. Once again, helping you digest all that information inside the query trace stuff. A quick footnote. You can actually use query block names to actually nominate where you're going to apply hints. So I can have a query block name in my top level SQL, but I can say I want to use the index on employee number on the employee table down inside the year higher block, which might be further down here somewhere inside my query block. So that's a nice way of having, in a massive great SQL statement, all the hints, if you need them, right at the top, which is obviously going to be helpful for someone who's a maintainer. And in particular, notice I didn't use the name of the index in this hint. This has been around since Oracle 11, I think. You can now say, use, a, use an index on the employee table that has the leading column of employee number. That's a lot more robust than that one, because if a DBA renames that index, that hint doesn't work anymore, and you'll never know.